King Rolf Klein, rest in peace. Former Premier of Alberta, Rolf Klein, buried today, but his legacy of leadership, his pursuit of fiscal conservatism lives on. Here's Preston Manning on Rolf Klein's legacy. Well, there was some tension in those early days, too, because yeah. there was pressure on reform to go provincial, and so there was a fear that there'd be some competition at the uh, provincial level. And we didn't agree on everything, but when we were trying to build the bigger, broader tent, we had this united alternative effort that can resulted in the Canadian Alliance. R Ralph was the one progressive conservative premier who came to that conference and said, we've got to build the, the bigger tent, and then gave some advice as how to do it. So in, in the end, he was very much part of uh, building a more united conservative movement, and in that sense can even take some credit for the current uh, majority conservative government in Ottawa. If only more government leaders would follow Ralph's example, he made it work. Earlier today, I caught up with Mike Blanchard, Sun News reporter out of Calgary, to remember and honor Ralph Klein. In modern times, Mike Blanchard, I think you'd agree that it is a unique legacy for Ralph Klein and uh, his crew to pay it all off, to pay the debt down, $23 billion to make it vanish. We'd love to see that being done today. It's unique. It's a tribute to Ralph, but unfortunately, it is unique. It is unique, Charles, and it's something we've uh, yet to see any other province uh, tackle. It was quite controversial, of course, back in 1993 when Ralph Klein began to tackle first a deficit and then a $23, $25 billion debt that this province had. But uh, that's the mandate that he came into office with. It's what Albertans wanted. Uh, he took some criticism for it, but he never backed down. Uh, you know, there were some protests at the time, but by and far, you know what, it, what happens. The silent majority was uh, behind Ralph all the way, and that showed up at the ballot box time and time again. Uh, it might have been a bit of a surprise for some people when he won the election the first time, but uh, clearly he won the hearts and minds of people, and that was just kind of the politician he was, Charles. There were uh, some uh, media people I recall at the time, because I recall covering it, who uh, did pretend that uh, some of those uh, demonstrations, mainly led by public sector unions, because of course they felt they were taking it in the teeth, that those public sector unions represented uh, the majority. You've got media people sometimes doing the same thing today in this country, not just in Alberta, but, but elsewhere. Well, Ralph Klein knew better, and he didn't depend on just his, quote, communications advisors and his communications experts, because Ralph Klein wasn't the kind of politician who was afraid to go out there, whether it was in a trailer, on a horse, in a car, truck, van, it didn't matter. Ralph Klein actually had the guts to go meet the people, even the people who disagreed with him. And he knew that in going out there, the majority, as you say, Mike, the silent majority, were with him all the way. Well, that's exactly right, because and you've identified it right, Charles, because he met the people. He would get on the ground, and he'd rub elbows with the people that he called Martha and Henry. And he knew what Albertans were telling him, what they wanted. You know, he did it in, uh, you know, in community halls and coffee shops. Uh, you know, Ralph Klein was a rare breed of politician where he wasn't afraid to do it right in the St. Louis Hotel here in Calgary, where he'd sit and basically tip one with anybody who uh, essentially wanted to talk with him. You know, and that's a, that's, it's a refreshing... Uh, change in it with a politician like that because too often the elected leaders that we see are are stuffy they're scripted they're on message they rarely deviate from the script uh, and when there's a problem they tend to run away from it duck and hide but Ralph Klein was never any of that he ran towards his problems and you know the 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 I guess the human elements that really popularized him is he wasn't afraid to admit his mistakes uh, when when he made them and he, he did make a few but, but he knew when he did it, and, uh, you know, he was essentially willing to step up to the plate. That's why people, I think, really admire him today. Even the people, uh, you didn't have to agree with his policies, but it's hard to find uh, people who would see Ralph Klein or viewed Ralph Klein as an enemy. And one of the things I liked about Ralph was he didn't use the, the weasel words that we hear all the time. And you ask politicians today or the people who are part of the sort of political machine, why can't you just do what Ralph did back then? Uh, they always use those weasel words, oh, that, that was then, we're, we're in unique times right now. Ralph never talked that kind of a trash. Uh, he was able to do it then. If Ralph were up and around right now, today, he'd be able to do it again today because it does depend on one person with a vision and the cojones to do it. It does, it really does. And there's still uh, a group 
uh, out there today, and I tend to call them the, the political elite. Uh, they're, you know, an intellectual crowd. They're uh, a little bit detached from, you know, real life, the, the stuff that you and I see, Charles. But, uh, and, and a lot of people wonder, you know, what they, they can never figure out why Ralph Klein was as popular as it was, because they can never connect with people the same way that Ralph Klein did. Uh, they, they, and I think there's a sense that in some respects that he kind of uh, tripped into it by accident. But, you know, in Klein's case, it was no accident. You know, he'd get out there and, and meet the people, and people admired him for that. And, of course, the people you call uh, the elites, whether they're from uh, academia or, or, or other worlds, the union world, whatever, um, they did, didn't like Ralph for, for, you know, I guess the, the simplest reason. Uh, Ralph didn't kiss their rear ends. He just, he just didn't kiss up to them. And uh, he wasn't part of them, and no. he didn't go to the fancy schools, and so he wasn't part of that club, and, and he didn't care. Uh, he wasn't uh, he wasn't telling them that he's he was envious of them and and all the sheepskin. He didn't want to belong to their club. No, he didn't want to belong to it at all because, like you said, the, the, the organized labor protests that happened in this province, he knew exactly what was behind that. They were noisy, they were loud, uh, they looked like they were uh, significant, but they weren't. Uh, and it, when you've got a vested interest uh, in a lot of these groups that were essentially trying to protect their, you know, phony baloney jobs in some cases, uh, yeah, he knew that that wasn't the case. He didn't want to be part of that because he knew that that's not what, you know, essentially the real Alberta was. So uh, you've got to, I mean, a lot of people will, will criticize Ralph Ralph Klein is, is not necessarily being, uh, you know, educated, the smartest guy, but he was as smart as any politician out there because he knew which way the wind was blowing. He was a populist. And one of his own statements, he said, he'd find out which way the crowd was going, get in front of it and call it a parade. Well, he was smart enough to know who was blowing sunshine up the horses behind. <laughs> and I only wish that the sophisticates who have all these degrees and all this national experience and international experience, they've gone all to all the right seminars and all the right conferences and all the right schools. I wish they had the common sense and the common touch that Ralph had. Yeah, exactly. I mean, get in touch with the people who put you there in the first place. Too many political leaders uh, lose that uh, perspective when they get into office. And, you know, and even Klein referred to it as dome disease. Uh, that you, you, know, you get into the, the, the hallowed halls of the legislature and you start listening to the people who are whispering in your ears. And if you get a little too close to that and you lose connection with the people who are on the ground, the people who put you in office in the first place, you know, heaven help us. And unfortunately, we see that happen again, time and time again with our elected leaders. Uh, they they tend to lose touch with the reality. They tend to lose touch with the people who are on the ground, the people who put them in office in the first place. You know, there's always a, a phony aspect to funerals, public celebrations, whatever you want to call them. And uh, Ralph knew this better than anybody. And the phony aspect is that when a, when a person passes, all these people who are knifing him constantly, uh, all of a sudden when the cameras are on or the microphones are on, say all sorts of kind things about him. And th there's been a lot of that kind of phoniness going on in the last few days, hasn't there, Mike? Well, there has in some respects, but a lot of it is, is pretty genuine, too. It's not hard to find somebody with a pretty good story about Ralph because he had a lot of connections. He had a lot of uh, close friends uh, during his time in office. And I'll tell you what, here's the sign of uh, just how popular a premier that Ralph Klein was. I mean, they do a, a, a memorial in Calgary for him, the celebration of life. And people started lining up at 7 o'clock this morning to get inside the Jack Singer Concert Hall. They wanted to be part of this. Uh, there's uh, plenty of overflow seating that people are, you know, that would have to go into there as well but you know you can't you can't fake that you know people are not going to come down to uh, to remember somebody at seven o'clock on a cold morning in Calgary if they really didn't believe in you know who they were oh no, no I wasn't referring to the real folks uh, the real folks uh, they, they loved Ralph I'm talking about those those phonies yes. that you were referring to earlier they were phonies when Ralph yeah. was in power and uh, they're phonies this week and singing his praises when everybody knows all real people know uh, that they had no, nothing nice to say about him. When a person person dies, they, they turn tail for just a, a couple of minutes, especially when the camera's on. Mike, uh, it's a pleasure having the camera on you. Thank you for doing what you're doing in Calgary. We love uh, yakking with you on the radio. Love having you on the Sun News Network. Welcome aboard, my friend. Anytime, Charles.